Studies show that uh, the majority of South African population use smart apps and uh, technology to access taxi services differently. I mean, the e-hailing taxi service industry has become a major role player in public transport. Even though it is very convenient, uh, the e-hailing taxi industry has also at times fallen victim to reports of crime and attacks on both drivers and the passengers. Bahai Tudumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we are joined in studio via Zoom. That's Kenny Moretzele, who is the Public Relations Officer and Spokesperson for the E-Hailing Partners Council. And is here to talk to us about the issues of safety and e-hailing drivers ahead of the festive season. He's joining us now via Zoom. Kenny, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. Welcome to the show. No, thank you very much, uh, Tabo, for hosting me and greetings to your viewers. Much appreciated. I mean, first and foremost, the festive season is upon us. Uh, I want to get a better understanding of, you know, how is the business is looking like for you around these times and, uh, you know, as we are approaching the festive season. Yeah, no, thank you very much, uh, Tabo. Mm, you'll understand that uh, the whole transport sector, Whenever there is time, is time for a season, we expect uh, an increased uh, demand in, in, in our services. So we are really, really, really uh, invested, envisaging a situation uh, where our drivers will be busy. Hence, we are on the ground uh, engaging them through mass meetings, just trying to give them some safety tips and emphasizing more on having enough time to rest because the safety of our riders also comes first. Mm. Thanks. I mean, what is your typical day-to-day, -day, you know, in business when we talk about e-hailing uh, drivers during these times as compared to the start of the year when people typically do not have money? I mean, you would hear some of your colleagues saying that, look, uh, I've not been sleeping uh, for some time now because uh, there's an uptake of uh, passengers that are coming through to use our transportation. But sometimes the days are not the same. You would hear someone saying that, look, I just got in now and it seems like it's a bit slow. Yeah, no, when, when it's festive season, uh, Mr. Tabo, mm, that's where you'll find some of our drivers working close to 15, 16 hours every day, non-stop. So, 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 hence we always advise that at least when they work, they should work a maximum of eight hours, then take a rest. Then after that, they can resume uh, their, uh, uh, their shift again. But what is important is to ensure that at all times, there are enough vehicles on the ground to service our clients. So that's, 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 that's basically what is happening. Uh, on day-to-day -day basis. Our drivers work Monday to Monday when it's first. There's no day off. There's no any form of relief in e-hailing. Such a language is foreign to us. Mm. Um, for your customers, mm. I mean, they vary from uh, school children to uh, the older generation and stuff. But I want to understand who do you find mostly uses the e-hailing transportation between men and women? Who are your customers? Now, our customers uh, 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 mostly it's, 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 it's ladies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the younger ones, especially at night. Uh, that's, 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 the, that's the demographics that we, we, we service at night. Uh, you normally call them AMA, AMA 2000. So at night we service them. Mm, then during the day, it's a bit of a mix, older ladies and also younger ones. But the most people that we service every day, it's women. You know that men, uh, most of them, they have their own vehicles and, and, and some they have even friends that use uh, cars. So they don't really rely on our services. But women, 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 our main target. Mm. Um, um, what is your general state of readiness? I mean, we are approaching the festive season. Obviously, uh, the numbers are expected to increase. Are you ready as the e-hailing industry, you know, 
uh, for an influx that will be having uh, throughout all parts of the country because people will be moving left, right and centre. I mean, people will be moving from Joburg to Durban, some will be going to Cape Town, some will even come to Joburg and then obviously the numbers will be uh, that many. You know, uh, given our circumstances, uh, the whole year it has been very difficult for our drivers. They've been not making enough. So everyone has been waiting for this season to come mm. so that we are able to, to increase our earnings. So we are ready. Mm, we've been taking our vehicles for uh, road uh, tests so that we don't have any problems uh, with the law enforcement on the road. And we are still encouraging that all our drivers make sure that your car is well serviced and is ready for the road for this festive season. So in terms of readiness, we've been ready. We've been ready since. Mm. Yes. Um, Kenny, uh, just before uh, we, we, we go for an ad break also, I mean, when you look at, uh, you know, some of the features that you have there, uh, sometimes people would, uh, you know, find it difficult, especially you saying that uh, there are, you know, a lot of young people that are using uh, your, your um, I mean, your apps and all these kind of things. But how do you make sure as an e-hailing uh, service that, uh, you know, you get to people that are still struggling to be technologically savvy, if I may put it that way. You, you will understand currently as, as operators on the ground, we are not in charge uh, with regards to the technology itself, right? We are consumers of this technology ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, so, so uh, in terms of expanding uh, the accessibility of our service, uh, that responsibility currently solely lies with Uber and Bolt. You'll mm -hmm. understand that in the previous years, we didn't, we didn't have the same services in Limpopo, Tulokwani, uh, you go to Nelspray, we didn't have such services. But currently, we are seeing we have drivers coming from those respective cities who are using e hailing services. So, yes, on our side as operators, we only rely on these two technological companies to expand the market. Then as for us, we are ready to service the market whenever Can it's available. Mm. Kenny, I want us to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to delve deep into, uh, you know, some of the safety concerns and some of the issues that are still lingering in the air, particularly when uh, we talk about the issues of e-hailing. Let's go for an ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in before the ad break, we looked at the state of the business for the e-hailing industry in this time of uh, festivities, as well as the general state of readiness of the sector for and ahead of the festive season. Still joining us via Zoom is Kenny Moretzel, who is the Public Relations Officer and Spokesperson for the e-hailing Partners Council. Kenny, thanks very much for staying on. I want us to now shift focus to the safety concerns of the sector ahead of the holiday season. I mean, reports came out on Sunday, the 12th of uh, uh, you know November, claiming that South African women in e-hailing services are calling for enhanced safety measures. Uh, I mean, before we get into that, what is the general safety of women drivers in the industry? And especially now that we are heading to the busiest time of the year. Safety, it's, it's, it's a re real, real, real challenge in healing. Mm, we don't have any form of safety currently, whether women or men. Mm, our, 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 our operations uh, remain the same. Our working conditions are the same. So we cannot currently uh, separate or try to distinguish the working conditions of women and men in the e -hailing. We are suffering, we are exposed uh, to the same dangers out there every day. So, 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 so. I understand the call of our fellow colleagues uh, who, who are calling for, 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 for extra safety measures to be put in place because what we have currently does not serve the purpose. You will understand that we are only given an SOS button where you will press to ask for backup. And that when the backup comes, 
it will also depend how far the the private company security company is at that time and whenever they come it's only one car with one security guard which in most cases they arrive late or they are outnumbered whenever they get there especially when we are dealing with issues related to minibus taxi violence they are always outnumbered so their impact remains minimal in this case Mm. I mean, as, 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 as a council, uh, I mean, it, you know, during the year you argued that the inability of government to pass the National Transport Amendment Bill was the root cause of the problems that you are having also, uh, you know, in terms of the disputes that we've been having from you guys as an e-hailing uh, service and also including the taxi drivers there. Do you think that that bill, since it's, it's you know, um, it hasn't been um, uh, signed because obviously now there's no regulations when it comes to that, uh, how can uh, you know, a government fr fast track that. I know that the signing is very important, but um, has, you know, your service providers been able to address these challenges uh, with government in its entirety so that they may be able, at least somewhere, somehow, to have uh, a regulated space? No, on, 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 on that particular issue, my brother, um, regulation, we are at the advanced stage. Uh, I think it's last month where we were furnished with a draft regulation for us to make submissions, which we did. Uh, uh, however, what I want to emphasize is when it comes to safety, right, it's the issue that lies with, with Uber and Bold and the law enforcement. Law enforcement and these two app companies do not put proper measures to protect this service. Even after the signing of the bill, we will still have this kind of violence. I, I, I can give you an example now and say, with the likes of meter taxes, they are well regulated, but they still suffer the same issues of hijacking, right? Mm -hmm. Even after uh, they are operating within a regulated space. So safety solely lies with our law enforcement agencies together with the measures put in place by these two app companies. Mm. I mean, before we go to an ad break, I want to understand, since you're saying that uh, solely relies with it, but I want to understand now, where are you uh, when it comes to these talks? Because I know, obviously, uh, previously you had uh, you know, engagements with uh, the industry itself, the taxi industry, when after those incidences that happened in Proteatlan and in Maponya Mall, uh, what is the current situation now? Do we know uh, if uh, there is harmony, there is coexistence when it comes to um, uh, transport in those areas? No, those, those, those talks uh, fell flat. Mm. They did not yield any results. Uh, the situation just calmed itself because uh, the interventions that uh, the city of Johannesburg tried to bring, we felt as inhalers that uh, they were very much biased and fair because you'll remember the first outcomes of those talks, they announced the suspension of inhaling services in and around Mapunya Mall, which to us was unfair because now it means they've given our counterpart uh, the right to operate while our businesses suffer. So we have decided, you can say, we need to focus on law enforcement, right? Because these issues are issues of criminality by nature. Mm -hmm. We are living in a constitutional uh, democracy whereby everything needs to happen through the law or by the law. So, according to the law that regulate the arresting of anyone who infringe or broke any form of the law, it is only police officers who can stop any vehicle, ask questions, then enforce the law. Not taxi patrollers, not taxi driver, not marshals in the taxi rank. So, hence, we said as e-hailing industry, we want to focus on the law enforcement 
so that they do their job in enforcing law in this industry. Kenny, I want us to pocket there. We will conclude the conversation after the ad break. Uh, do stay with us. We're coming back with more after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show. And before the ad break, we zoomed in on the safety and security issues of e-hailing drivers, men and women all together. And now we look at uh, what can be done this holiday season to curb the high number of, uh, you know, alleged harassment and assault cases uh, of these uh, drivers. Kenny uh, Moretel is still with us via Zoom. Kenny, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, as we conclude our conversation, um, w before we can get into the tips, I want to understand now oh, what what is it that uh, you would want to happen, uh, you know, from government's side in order to make sure that, uh, you know, they speed up the process of regulating the industry? No, I think on, 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 on that end, we, we are on the track, we're on the right track so far. We, we've been having uh, follow-up engagements with the provincial DOT uh, to try and, 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 and bring them on board so that uh, the submissions that we have done or the ones that we have made it, so that they can also throw their weight behind them. So they make the final document of the regulation. So, 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 so it, it was three, three weeks down the line uh, we were dealing with the memorandum that we submitted to the Premier's office. So you'll understand that the Premier's office currently is the one that serves as the mediation between ourselves as the Council and the Department of Transport in the province. So we are making progress in the, in, 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 on that side in terms of negotiating that uh, the Department of Transport support the submissions that we've made to the national department for regulation so so far i can say we are on the right track mm. i mean wh what safety tips do you have for those in the e-hailing sector particularly as we are heading to the festive season okay one mm, as far as riders concern one we advise that all our riders when it's a cash trip make sure that before we arrive to the final destination you have paid for your ride because remember the the practice of paying at the destination was only relevant uh, previously when we're still using live billing but currently when you get into the car already you know your price so you might as well just pay immediately so that when we get to the final destination we don't waste any time. You get out, you get into your house, then the driver moves away. Because there's a new tendency where they wait, the criminals wait for us, where we are doing our drop-offs. Immediately when we are still paying, exchanging money, that's where they come in into our cars and rob both clients and the drivers. So that's tips number one. Tip number two, to all our drivers, avoid using your central lock when you are loading or taking your clients open your doors manually because in places like johannesburg cbd yourville immediately they request when you get there immediately when someone approaches the car they know that you're gonna use your central lock system then your doors all of them are unlocked then they will come simultaneously four six guys then they will open your car and start roping you immediately so these are basic safety tips that we give to our drivers to ensure that they minimize any form of criminal elements that are targeted to them Two, never stop exactly at the pickup point as a driver at night stand 100 meters away until your client come out then you can see who you're going to pick then move only proceed when you're sure that the coast is clear, there is no any other person around that pickup point except your client. Mm. I mean, uh, Kenny, in the interest of time, um, um, uh, you know, so, you've highlighted something very important there. 
mm. particularly about payments and stuff. But we cannot avoid the fact that women remain the most vulnerable in any sector. But, um, you know, I, w- I want us to speak about what else you will be doing to ensure that there is enhanced safety of, uh, you know, also women drivers in the industry uh, this holiday season. And also looking at, uh, you know, dealing with the issues that have been happening. I mean, we've been seeing on social media, either, uh, you know, uh, there is an altercation between uh, your drivers and the female counterparts, uh, you know, as there are allegations that they haven't paid, all these kind of things. How do you deal with those issues so that your drivers also cannot take the law onto their hands? Yeah, no, it, it, it's a serious, it's a serious concern, uh, especially the issue of of, of, of non-payment uh, to, to 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 our drivers. It's, it's it's really serious. However, we have put uh, uh, measures in place where we have our own response teams, emergency task teams, where whenever drivers have challenges, is either they are being robbed or clients refuse to pay, then they just report in our specified platforms, then they will receive backup and proper measures will be taken. And we always advise that such clients should be taken straight to police station so that we avoid any other inconveniences. If clients refuse to pay, you immediately call backup, then uh, our task teams will come and back you up. Take that client straight to police station so that we don't have to deal with other issues that are now beyond our control as an industry. Mm. What would be your parting words uh, as, we, as we are heading to the festive season? Now, we would advise all uh, our clients to ensure uh, that they familiarize themselves with our systems. When you're on board there, before you request, ask which uh, payment method do you want to use. If you, you choose cash, you need to make sure that you have cash in your pocket. And if you choose card, then it will give you uh, the option where you'll put all the details of, of, of your card so that it can deduct on its, on its own. We are trying to avoid a situation whereby you'll be in convincing yourself and the driver still looking for ATMs. At the same time, the bill is increasing. Hence, you see now people start struggling to pay because there were a lot of stops before we get to the final destination. Then when you get there, the price is big now. Then we have challenge now to pay. So that's my advice to our riders. Please choose the correct payment method and stick to that. To our drivers, let us be patient. Let us be gentle with our riders. Uh, We are here to serve them. So customers, service comes first and customer service is a priority. Thank you very much. Kenny Moritzeli, thanks very much for taking the time. Much appreciated for coming this evening. Thank you very much. Well, there was uh, Kenny Moritzeli, who is the public relations officer and spokesperson for the e-hailing partners council, talking to us about the e-hailing industry state of safety and security ahead of this holiday season, as well as some of the safety tips for the drivers, both males and females, that they can use as we head into the busiest season of the year. We know that um, since the arrival of the e-hailing in the country in 2013, you know, concerns over its legality are still lingering. Uh, we, you know, the industry is waiting for the signing, or rather the passing of the National Transport Amendment Bill, uh, which they say it is the root cause of the problem. Um, you know, the minister we know of transport is still sitting with that bill in his table. We hope that uh, one way or another it will be signed so that there could be some regulations of that, of that sort in the industry itself. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode by simply sending us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can send us a WhatsApp or call us at 0815318857. For myself and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.